This is the biggest mistake that I made going into this psychedelic journey. Remember the last time that you lost your keys or some important item like a phone? Just for the life of you, you just search your whole damn house and you just can't find it, right? You're frantically and desperately trying to find this so bad that you do insane shit like checking the same right pocket six times. It's like I wasn't there the last five times, but maybe number six, it will just, maybe I, I missed it somehow. And it's just because you've kind of ran out of places to look for. Maybe you search the garbage. Maybe you search the inside cushion of the couch, like you unzip it and everything. Even though it logically makes no sense that your phone or keys would be in there, it's like, maybe. It's like, well, where else are you supposed to look? And then after a while, you kind of just give up, right? I've lost it, no point looking, I'm just wasting my energy and time. And then something magical happens. The moment you let go of that attachment to trying to find this thing, whoosh, oh, there it is, in the most obvious space. Moo. So what does this have to do with the psychedelic journey or the spiritual path? Well, hang on, mate, I'm, I'm getting to it, I'm getting to it. When it comes to psychedelics, we all have different reasons for exploring these mysterious tools. Some of us, like myself and what got me into it, was a journey of healing. You know, I had a lot of unresolved trauma. I'm sure I still do. And I was at a point in my life where I was just at the end of my rope, you know? I didn't know what else to do and all these conventional modalities just it didn't do it for me, in fact, Every time I would try to heal myself using, you know, Western therapy or other tools, because it wouldn't give me what I really wanted, the healing that I was so desperately yearning for, I would feel even more broken afterwards. You ever feel this? When you try to heal and then you finally have the courage to, I don't know, maybe you hire a therapist or you do whatever it is, whatever modality that you buy into. And maybe it even works for the short term, but then you're kind of right back where you started, but in a sense even worse, because now that you've tried and failed, this kind of spirals your self-esteem down the gutter. At least, you know, at least it did for me anyway. <clears throat> and so, <clears throat> ew, excuse me. And so I was at this point where I didn't know what to do. Fast forward my journey, and I found myself in the Amazon rainforest, <laughs> getting smudged by tobacco smoke from this shaman speaking this strange Shipibo language. And I came into this journey with, I mean, yeah, you know, you hear like, don't have expectations, only intentions, but even then, like consciously you're like, oh no, I don't have any expectations, but subconsciously, of course you do. Why else would most of us do this? At least for me, right? I'm, I wanted to get healed, I wanted to finally break free from this depression and addictive tendencies which led me to many dark roads of violence, despair and hostility. And that was just my environment growing up, very hostile. Like my intention for going into these psychedelics was to, you know, heal from my traumas and I guess it, it shined a light on that aspect of me. But I think what it really gave me, which I didn't really expect, was a whole new perspective of the polarity of life, of my own suffering, my own hero's journey, if you will. I must admit that throughout the majority of my psychedelic journey, I always went into it with this attachment for searching. And this leads me into my biggest mistake going into these psychedelic experiences, which is this desperate need to find something, right? to gain something through this spiritual search. And there's nothing wrong with searching and, you know, even ties back to what Jesus said, apparently anyway, which is seek and ye shall find. But I would add to that, seek without attachment and maybe you will find. <laughs> you know, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't and that's okay. And because like this, this biggest mistake kind of ties into two aspects, right? It's got two layers to it. The first layer is this desperate need to find something on the spiritual search, whether it's healing, or enlightenment. And then the second layer is trying to gain something, whether we're trying to gain confidence, or self-esteem, or clarity of purpose. And it's like, ties back to that story 
of when you lose an item trying to search for your keys. Many times, at least from my own experiences, you'll have to let me know in the comment section below if you can relate to this, but for me, it's when I stop looking is when it appears. I don't want you guys to confuse what I'm saying and twist it into, ah, oh, then just don't do anything. Just passively sit on the couch, scratching your ass, sniffing your fart particles, watching Netflix or whatever. And it's not so much doing as it is being. And this ties back to finding your keys, right? It's like this weird thing happens, and I'm sure that this is tied into a lot of metaphysical principles, and I'm sure this is kind of related to the law of attraction, where you kind of act and feel as if you already have the thing, because then if you come from this place of, oh, I'm trying to gain something, I'm trying to find something that's outside of me, then you're already acting from a place, at least emotional, emotionally and metaphysically speaking, you're already coming from a place of lack. And of course, it's hard to act like you already have something when you don't have it, <laughs> at least materially. But I understand this aspect of letting go. So when we're talking about this, uh, this attachment, this, this desperate need to find something, there's this metaphysical force that kind of repels it, right? And I know, okay, just stay with me, because I know I can, this can sound a little bit woo. Let's just take my cat Felix, for example. It's very hard to get him to come to me when I have this obvious need for him to come to me. It's so weird. Even when you pretend to, even when you're like consciously like, no, 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 you, like you pretend like you don't care if he jumps on your lap or whatever, and you just sit there. But inside, internally, emotionally speaking, you really, really, really want him to jump on your lap so you can just mm, snuggle up in him, right? But because he feels that you want it, of course, he doesn't go anywhere near you. And cats are really good, they're really good teachers actually, which is to teach you to let go, to detach from outcomes. And of course, when I've completely let go of that, that need for him to come to me, and I'm like, I'm, I'm reading or like I'm working, especially when I'm working and I need to focus, then he jumps to me, then he's up all in my face. And maybe even trying to pick up the opposite sex works in a similar way. You know, when you really desperately want to hook up with the girl and because she can feel this, it's like, eh, I don't want it. But then when you let go of that attachment, then it, you just become more attractive, you know? So again, this is just like two tiny examples of how this desperate need of attachment can actually repel the thing that you want. And this ties into psychedelics in the same way. You know, and I can speak from my own experience. It was when I was in this healing mode this, I need to heal my depression. And even though my first few experiences would kind of help me with this, but I'm like, oh no, but I still have work to do, right? I still need to heal. I still have remnants of this icky depression and anxiety and trauma and all this stuff, right? I wanted to be this enlightened being, completely detached from all negative emotions. And of course, the further I went down this psychedelic journey of constantly trying to heal, then this just recreated this loop of me needing to heal. And of course I got some backlash <laughs> from this, <laughs> trying to get, 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 instead of just being and giving. And then I got slapped by the furious hand of God. And it was what I needed, right? I was like, dude, let it go. I mean, yeah, of course you can still journey if you want, but Again, it's not, it's not about the act of searching. Because we're all searching, I'm still searching. And I have to remind myself this. Again, it's like, just, but you gotta like search without the attachment. Because the more desperate you are for the thing, the more the thing runs away from you. Speaking of psychedelics, it is mushroom season here in Australia, it's been a while. This ain't psilocybin, so don't demonetize me YouTube. This is a, I have no idea what this is. Most likely this isn't even edible. Well, you know, most mushrooms are edible, so I'm just edible once. Okay, so I kind of lost the thread there, but let's take this as a sign and continue on to the second part of my biggest mistake going into the psychedelic experience. And that is trying to gain rather than give. We all know the principle of giving, and this kind of ties into the law of karma and reciprocity. There, there is a balance, and some of us fall into the category of maybe giving too much, 
where you just give, 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 and then you kind of suck your own resources dry, and then you have nothing left to give, and then you're kind of like, ugh, just exhausted and drained, and this leads into the depression, and extra stress, and then you get sick, and then this kind of leads into this downward spiral of hell. And then, of course, there's the opposite end of the spectrum, which is taking too much. You just take, 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 and not giving enough. And I've followed on both the extreme polarities, and I must admit that for most of my life, I've definitely been in, in the taking aspect, and this isn't good. This, this led to a lot of problems in my life. Now, like, I'm not saying this to justify, but just giving a, I guess, an origin story, an understanding of why some of us act the way we do. And I alluded earlier in this video that I grew up in a very hostile environment, this survival mode in this every man for himself. And especially when you get betrayed a lot of times and people kind of take advantage of you or deceive you and lie to you or they could be your best friend right to your face and then you just give them all your time and energy and then they screw you over royally in this fucking, oh man, it hurts so much. And then you start to lack trust for other people. And I had this for quite a few, even like throughout my life, for sure. And then I went in this aspect of kind of, you know, just giving and trusting and being super open, only to get hurt from people that I thought would never do this kind of stuff. So anyways, this path of just taking because you're in this scarce mindset where maybe you believe that anything, everything can be taken away from you like that. And we've all gone through this experience where something very important to you gets taken away from you whether it's a relationship or money, assets, career, peace of mind, whatever. Sometimes life can hit you with a sledgehammer that just shatters your reality into a million pieces. And some of us react to these situations with more grace than others. And, you know, I've got to give myself some credit is that sometimes I, I do take on these situations with grace. And then other times I don't. I crumble and I start to lose faith and perpetuate this scarce survival mindset. So what does this have to do with the psychedelic journey, right? With this balance of giving and receiving, because again, it's not just giving to people, but also the plant. And I don't know where you guys stand on this. I, I would assume, like if you're like me anyway, you look at these psychedelic tools as almost I don't know if I want to put, label them as entities, but they definitely have a spirit to them. They have their own being, right? This is why I really enjoy the shamanic tradition of doing these psychedelics. Like I just recently had a, a San Pedro Wachuma experience in the Australian wilderness. I got told by my shaman, a reminder. But when we go into this, we're always, again, trying to gain something, whether it's gaining clarity or purpose or confidence or healing or whatever it is but without thinking of what can I actually offer and, and yeah it sounds weird like well okay how what am I supposed to what give to a, a plant and it's like yeah you can actually and not just the plant itself but it could be to to earth giving an offering that's why in a lot of shamanic traditions where you're talking about aboriginal or the indigenous tribes in the Andes or the Amazon rainforest or the Mapuches or any indigenous tribe, psychedelic or not, there tends to be a common pattern of giving offerings, whether it's giving a physical offering, like something important to you, or food. Like, you know, I, I've been in some ceremonies where we literally give food to the earth and then we bury it or you, you offer some tobacco to the fire or just something, some sort of a, a gesture or you give up, if you want to go a bit more deeper, is that you give something up. Like, I think this is why fasting can be very powerful or going on a diet. It's not necessarily that, oh, you must avoid these certain types of food, otherwise you, the psychedelic gods are going to close their doors on you and kick you out and be like, sorry, mate, you ate bloody potato chips with that bloody vegetable oil you banned for three weeks mate it's like it's not because of that i think what makes it powerful the diet outside of ayahuasca because there are certain foods that you should, probably should avoid but like so let's say 
take something like the cactus, San Pedro, or Huachuma, where there is no specific diet, and you can actually eat whatever you want, and you're still probably going to get an experience. But I think it's like the, the attitude, the energy of giving up something before going into it. I've noticed it with myself, like I've, I've had these journeys where I go into it just no preparation, not really. And I, you know, I get an experience, but when I go into it with a stronger intention and I put discipline before the actual journey, <clears throat> whether it's giving up uh, smoking for a week or just giving up something that I'm attached to, the experience tends to be a little bit more profound. And again, I don't, I don't want to put that expectation of like, oh, if you give up this thing, then you're, you're going to have an enlightening experience. But again, it's just doing it for the sake of doing it, acting in the spirit of giving something. And of course, this carries on to many things, like even in Judaism, what do they call it? Uh, tithing? I don't remember how it's pronounced, but T-I-T-H-E. You basically give 10% of your income to, to charity, to the poor, to something. Like you just give something. A lot of these religious traditions really tapped into this principle of giving. And this is a, a reminder for myself too, because I'm not going to pretend like I'm freaking Gandhi and I just give everything away. I still have attachments to scarcity and, you know, I, 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 I too, I'm human, right? I still can fall into these fears of like the world crumbling and it's like oh shit I better collect all my acorns and collect food for the winter because it can all get taken away you know I've gone through it many times with the channel like where you can just get a strike like this or your, your income halves and then your income halves and inflation doubles and it's like oh crap now I've got like <laughs> a quarter you know or whatever it is and the more I tend to attach and feed into these fears, the more it recreates this reality versus when you actually let go. It's, it's honestly, it, it's kind of freaky sometimes of the timing of when you genuinely let go, not just consciously like, yeah, yeah, <sighs> okay, I've let it go. But subconsciously, you're still kind of grabbing onto some of it. But when you actually, actually let it go, it's quite freaky deaky of the magical things that can happen in your life. Just to reiterate, this isn't about just being passive in life, not doing anything. But, <clears throat> it is about letting go of that attachment, you know what I mean? So you still gotta be open, you still gotta face your fears and just give without expectation. And it's a constant practice because sometimes you'll go on this awesome run where things are just working out, things are clicking. You're giving, you're, you're connected to spirit, to nature. You're meditating every day. Right? You stop smoking or whatever it is. And things are going really well. But life will always find a way to test you, you know? I remember Ram Das talking about like the, the further along you go on your spiritual journey and the more you kind of face your demons and move past them, then <laughs> the devil's kind of like, all right, mate send the big guns after him. And then they kind of like, the deeper you go within yourself, the, the, the scarier and stronger the monsters are guarding the gates. And perhaps this is why video games are designed the, the way they are. Ooh. Okay, wait, so I'm getting distracted. It's just more mushrooms, look. Maybe this is why video games are designed the way they are and why we connect with them so much, where there's this level progression where you start off with not many moves. Let's, let's take Resident Evil, for example. At the beginning, you've got one crappy pistol, which does barely any damage. You've got hardly any bullets. The enemies that you've versed, like, they're pretty strong, but they're kind of, like, basic. As you progress and you, you get a shotgun, but then as you get the shotgun, now you've got to verse this freaking insane chainsaw wielding maniac it takes many many bullets and then you progress along and then oh crap now i've got this merchant i can actually upgrade my weapons and put more power and reload speed and you know and all this all this amazing equipment and tools and i can get body armor but then as you level up and gain stronger tools then oh crap now the bigger monsters who can take more bullets and then eventually they start shooting back at you and the, the bosses are scarier and stronger. And I feel like this is like life. Yeah, I guess all in all, 
<laughs> a message to my past self is when going into these psychedelic experiences and the spiritual journey in general again because everything that I've said in, in today's video doesn't just apply to psychedelics it's just a spiritual journey because psychedelics aren't for everybody but if you are going to do it including my past self my message to you is to just let go of the attachment of outcome and learn to give more than receive but also if you're too much of a giver then learn to receive too again it's the the rhythm <laughs> of life you know that's why nature is actually one of the greatest teachers on this earth is because it mirrors reality on all these different levels that's why we have different seasons that go in this cycle because imagine if it just rained all the time you know the world will get flooded but then if it was sunny and dry all the time, then shit, things wouldn't really grow. And we need all these different seasons going in cycles because sometimes we need to go through times of complete action and taking, and, you know, just doing, 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 facing your fears. And then other times it's like, okay, now I'm in the autumn and I need to just let go, shed the old leaves, right? Let go of that which does not serve anymore. And then you go into winter where it's like, okay, now it's time for just deep rest and hibernation. And then spring comes along. Okay, rejuvenation. Let's start picking all the, all the fruits and veggies from the seeds that you planted long ago. And then on and on we go. And instead of a circle, it's a spiral. So things kind of repeat, but they're kind of different, right? It's the same, same, but different. And there's, remember, with the spiritual journey or even enlightenment, if you want to call it that there is nothing to gain because it's already there it's already within you it's about shedding off the layers enlightenment isn't something that you gain it's something that you already have you just need to connect to anyways guys hope you enjoyed this video and if you wish to support this you enjoy what we do then consider supporting us on patreon your donations help a lot or give it a like or a share subscribe to this channel catch you guys soon peace much love